Hey guys, welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page. Make sure you drop a comment, like, subscribe. Do all the fun things. Follow. Follow everything. We're here to entertain you guys. What are you waiting for? Hurry up, let's go. Enjoy. Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. I am Dax Holt, joined by my good buddy Adam Glenn out in New York City. How are you, my who, friend? Who, who, who? I'm good, buddy. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I know. I was trying to who, who. Remember we used to do those? No? no, you were the only one that did that. Oh, never mind. Um, <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm exhausted. Actually, I'm not even tired. I'm, it, it's just the, the weather's good. It's been crazy fashion week, which will... Hopefully, let's talk about that um, but uh, in a little bit. But I'm good, man. Just kind of just seen a lot of people. <laughs> it's been good. Yeah. New York City's it's back. It's funny because I feel like every time I'm like texting with you or talking to you, you're like, oh, I just ran into Drew Barrymore. Oh, I ran into David Dobrik. Oh, I ran into – and it's just like one person after another. So I'm like, screw having a celebrity on this week. I want to hear tales from Adam's <laughs> journeys through New York because Fashion Week is one of the busiest times of year where – you know, everyone seems to be in town, whether they're in the fashion industry or whether they like have some connection to fashion or they're there because a big brand is paying them a shit ton of money to go walk down a red carpet for them. So I do want to get into that. I feel like there's just been a lot of things going on in your life. I feel like there's things that I want to talk about, things I've been doing for TV. So we will get into that. Let's read a couple reviews real fast. Yes. Um, as a little thank you, a little shout out to these people that are taking the time. So this one comes from Mavericks69. Says super great, better than most, and content you can't hear elsewhere. That is true. This that is, is a true. whole lot of content you're not gonna hear elsewhere because you know what? We're giving you the real shit. We're telling you exactly how it is. So uh, thank you, Mavericks69. This one comes from Fashion Geek 25. Fantastic. Lorena from Scotland. I started listening to some of your old interviews, and before I knew it, I went from one to another and was there for hours because they were so enjoyable. Keep up the good work. I love this. Very cool. I Fashion love when Geek. people go back into our archive. Dude, I don't know if I've told you, but you know, we have the private Facebook page where people will join, and a part of joining, they normally have to answer a couple questions, one of it being what's your favorite past episode of the Hollywood Raw podcast? And then who would you like to see as a guest? And a lot of the answers are people we've already had as guests on the podcast. And I think people don't know to go back and dig through our archives. Like I'm getting, you know, oh, I want Heather McDonald. I'm like, we've had her. Oh, I want, you know, the, the do from Dumois. We've had her. I want, you know, Mike, the situation we've had him like, Guys, I'm telling you, there's so much great content. You got to go back. People have asked for Perez Hilton. We've had him on. People asked from surfer, surfer guy Max from TMZ. We've had him on. Go back and look. There's so much good stuff. All right. One last one for us. This one's from Holly May's mom. Love the randomness. It's a good podcast with celebrities that are interesting and have good stories. Holly May's mom. Yes. That is accurate. That is us. We are the most random podcast in Hollywood. It's random, but it's interesting. I, I listen, the celebrities we have on the show, I'm not going to lie. We're not going to get Tom Hanks. You know, we're not going to get Brad Pitt. But the people wow. we get are wow. interesting. That, that's that's really thinking positive. No, I mean, I no, within the next six months, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> just because it's not us. It's just our Skype doesn't go that far. You know, we only afford the poor Skype that can only go like seven miles. <laughs> So we only get the 45 minute Skype yeah. before the, you know, it turns into a, uh, a, a paid zoom call. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but the people we have on the show are just interesting. They're fun. They have something to say. They're unique, you know, a perspective that we're curious about. So it's, uh, like the tales of Hollywood. Um, we're not, you know, our podcast, it's funny. We see a lot of blind, blind item podcasts blowing up mm -hmm. and, and, and listen, I, I'm happy that they're doing well. People are doing well. We're not a blind item podcast. You know, we are like we tell the I don't want to say we tell the truth because we do. But it's like our podcast. What do we what do? How would you describe the podcast, Dex? God, dude, 
but the, I think the biggest feedback I get from people is like, thank you for giving me not only the dirt, but like good and bad side of Hollywood and like the realness of it. Thank you for giving celebrities a platform to talk and be honest with you and show their real side. I think I get that about our celebrity interviews. And then I get a lot of feedback from people that are just like, dude, I fucking love these paparazzi episodes because you are hearing something that you don't hear on any other podcast out there. No one else is talking to paparazzi. And, you know, and I say paparazzi, but I also think we have field producers, we've got cameramen, we've got so many different varieties. But I, I, I think the ones that are like paparazzi, paparazzi, I think those are the biggest feedback ones. But then just insiders in Hollywood and people that have worked around celebrities for so long and then can give their honest opinion on what they believe these celebrities are really like in person. Yeah. These, that's the best. Yeah, man. It's crazy because it's funny. I was I was riding my bike in New York City today and I'm, you know, it, when I talk to you on the phone, I talk to you, you know, I'm always like, oh, you know who I just saw? David Dobrik. Oh, you know who I just saw? Drew Barrymore. Does this sound ridiculous when I say those things to you on the phone? Dude, I've always told you your life is ridiculous. Like, there's one moment where you're you're like, oh god, this was a long day. But I, I did talk to Oprah. Today. I'm like, what? Like, you can't throw out Oprah's name and then just be like, oh, I just had a random chit chat with Oprah, or oh, hey, I'm in Shaq's car right now. I gotta go. Like, you really have the most random life. Oh, well, actually, it's pretty funny. I mean, we'll talk. Let's get into it because I got, I actually have a story about today that happened. That's pretty kind of gnarly. Um, uh, yeah, let's get it. It's just our podcast is this. We reveal the fourth wall of Hollywood, what it's really like, what's really going on. It's And I, there's so much stuff. We're not two talking heads. We have more than, you know, we've both been doing this for over a decade now. We have a lot of experience. We have a lot of, um, the, the shit, you know, it's funny. We were on Dumois. And, again, we're not blind items. We're telling stories. I'm like, yeah, like, I, they're, we're not telling you to, for you to guess like riddles and stuff. We're not putting together these riddles like an actor walked in and asked the brute. You know, no, we don't do that. We kind I of, don't get me wrong. I do. I do love my fair share of blind items. That's just not us. But hey, I do want to ask you because there has been a big rumor going around, and I feel that you just saw Leo the other day. There has been a huge story circulating that Leo and Gigi Hadid are dating. Now, you ran into Leo what like? I don't know. Two weeks a ago? Week ago? I saw him twice, actually. Ago. No, I saw him last week. I saw him two weeks ago for the first time, and then I saw him last week as well. So I saw him like twice in the last two weeks. Now, w was Gigi at either of these events? No. Okay. So she was When wasn't I was there, there when, I, when I saw him, he was, the first one was at an, uh, it wasn't an, it was, I guess it was sort of an, it was the VMA's after party. And uh, it was at this place called The Ned in New York City. It's like a hot spot right now. It's owned by Richie Akiva, the guy who, you know, owns One Oak. And I don't even know if he owns it. I think he just might be like the face on it, like the promoter of it. Anyway, um, I saw him outside The Ned smoking a cigarette. And it was before like the party really started. It was pre he seemed pretty chill. Then the next, I saw him hanging out with these like dudes um, just walking around Soho. But both times, the party, Gigi was not there. She did not attend the party. And... The one time in Soho, um, he was just walking around with his friends. Which, by the way, like, Leo's friends, for some reason when I look at them, I I'm just surprised that they're Leo's friends. Like, they're not, like, guy guys. Like, they're just sort of, like, they seem, like, European. Like, it's just, like, interesting. I'm like, really? Like, that's who? <laughs> You're talking about, like, Lucas Haas and stuff? Lucas is different. And Toby, I mean, Toby's a, a kind of petite guy. But, you know, Leo's other friends who aren't actors, they're, like... They're unique. Like, they look like okay, artists. So, and one so, of them actually so here's is. The thing. So, Leo's 47. Gigi's 27. There are numerous sites now. Uh, People Magazine is even coming out and saying they have multiple sources saying that the two have started hanging out in New York. And, it, quote, unquote, they're getting to know each other. Uh, one insider says, adding that they're not, they, they're not dating just yet, but Leo is definitely pursuing Gigi. And then a third source is telling people that they've seen them hanging out with groups of people. It's only been a few weeks since the split. Since then, he's been hanging out with friends and family uh, after his breakup with Camilla Monroe, which was a four-year-long relationship. My question, though, Adam, do you think Leo's going to date Gigi? Number And please do not – no one take this disrespectful, but I, I didn't picture – 
Leo hooking up with a mom because we've just not seen that in the past. Like he likes his freedom. He likes to travel about the cabin and it kind of is all focused on him. Gigi is a young mother. And I just wonder, is that is that going to prohibit him from having this free, crazy lifestyle he likes? I, you know, when I saw this, when I saw this tip, or the story, I'm sorry, uh, I was kind of like surprised because mm-hmm. I'm surprised that they were, a, they were able to hang out where they weren't photographed. Now, there is places in New York City that they don't allow phones, like, or you're not allowed to take photos. Um, however, I'm surprised they just weren't like seen. I, I don't know how this story came about. Now, it could be true. Yolanda Hadid. What? What? Yeah, I mean. What? Yolanda did you did you say Yolanda no was that I didn't say Yolanda I don't know however here's what I will say (laughs) I I personally don't think there's any truth to this and here's the reason why a she's a little old for Leo b Mm -hmm. she's already a celebrity and the girls Leo has dated he sort of makes them a celebrity when he dates them um he hasn't really dated a girl in a while that we kind of no, like. Okay, Adam. Does just Gigi? Does she ever tip off the paps to where she's gonna be? <clears throat> and by Gigi, her, her people, her mom. Do people know where Gigi's gonna be hanging? We out? know when like there's events going on because there's general information. So if we I don't know mean events. I, I know, mean, I know. But here's the she's thing: she's going house shopping, and suddenly at, there's nine people following her with cameras because she's out. So here's a little story. So the other day, I think it was last week or last week, she was doing the Tonight Show. So all the photographers, all the photographers knew to wait at her house, and she'll be leaving her place at three fifteen, three forty five to go to the the Tonight Show. I, from my experience, I don't know or I don't have any insight as far as Gigi calling the paparazzi uh, on herself. Um, okay. She is nice. She is she is cool. Her security, from my experience, kind of works with the paparazzi and says, hey, guys, listen, you know, she's got the baby. Just go on that side, get the shots, you know, give her some space. You know, that's the kind of like they work with them, but they don't leak info, if that makes sense. Mm. So the reason I asked is because the story comes out and I feel that it's weird. The timing's strange on it. It feels like a PR move to me. It doesn't feel like an authentic hey, this is actually going to happen. It feels like someone, because this is great press for Gigi. Sure. And I joked Yolanda, but in reality, I think there's someone behind the scenes fueling this rumor because this is a great fucking rumor for Gigi Hadid to have is that she is the new potential girlfriend of Leonardo DiCaprio. Leo, maybe just, he just got a four-year relationship. Maybe he doesn't even want to date anyone right now. He just wants to chill. So... I don't know. It seems weird. It seems like, you know, why would he go after the super famous girl? She doesn't need him. He doesn't need her. Um, But it's great press. Yeah, it's awesome. It's good for her. I'll tell you what, though. I don't think Leo leaked leaked this out because he would be pissed. You know, he Mm -hmm. he does not like to be seen like he is. Especially it makes him look desperate. Yes, he's he is trying to pursue her. Dude. Leo doesn't give two shits. He's yeah. not going to be out pursuing something. No, no. And it's funny. I, you know, I think I've told this. The funniest thing is to see Leo out, like, with people because everyone tries to act. Like, I've seen Leo out, and his whole entourage tries to act like they're not, they don't know where he is, but they're always trying to see, oh, he's over there. Oh, he's over there. And every single girl is waiting to have that minute with him. To, they try to get in closer. They dance, and they try to get in closer. And then they try to get his attention. Very, But they try to do it very cool. And they all know where he is, but they all try to play it like they don't care, but they do. Yeah. Crazy. I get it. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, I, oh, you know what? So we've been getting hit up nonstop since we were on Dumois. Have Dude, you, has your DMs so I, been Dax, full? I don't know what happened on Dumois because I don't know if people think it's my story, but so many people hit me up. We were on Dumois, which is obviously big, and you told the story about your days at TMZ. And this was after TMZ. Um, oh, yes, this was after TMZ. And photos came across your desk 
of a big celebrity, very big mm-hmm. celebrity, nude. And everyone like was DMing me, you got to tell me who this celebrity is. Where, who, is the, who is the celebrity that was naked? Are you, and I was like, I didn't want to deal with it. I was like, just go to Dax. Go to Dax. Let him give the clues. You know what's funny is, again, we aren't a blind item like podcast, but like I almost felt the need to like give do a a blind item, and now my DM I can't even read through. I have so many unread DMs from people dying to have like any kind of tip or hint or anything, and so I was like, okay, like even do's hitting me up in in the like the DMs being like, please give me give me another hint to give out to people, and I was like, okay, fine. Uh, the dudes brunette you know he's not a blonde so that was another one <laughs> should, should i give one more hint yes i would love i know who it is but just to <laughs> just to please the audience dude give another hint oh god well i said he was a superhero yes he's super fa- a-list superhero <laughs> he's dude, he's he's got tattoos is that is that a good one because yes, not all of the I'll go with that. have tattoos. Dude, one guy hit me up and was just like, is it this person? No. Is it this person? No. Is it? And like, I'm not doing this. Stop. Like, just hit up Dax. Let it play. I was like, <laughs> I don't want to deal with it. All right. Because that, I did not see the celebrity. Hint. He's He's got tattoos, and that should help start narrowing it down. Here's Burnett, super famous, A-lister with tattoos. Here's another hint. The celebrity had a encyclopedia-sized penis. Like it, <laughs> like a, it's like a textbook penis. Like that's what I mean by encyclopedia. It's like that's how when you see the penis you see in textbooks, like health books. I, I don't, that's I what don't know penis. about that, but it was very sandy. <laughs> oh, he, he was rolling around and like, it was almost like he went out to the water first and got wet, and then came in and rolled around yeah. in the sand. If that makes sense, and so like every part of his body was just covered in sand and i was like that seems really uncomfortable and a lot of chafing must be going yeah. on yeah but there you go that's sort of weird so it looked like shrimp or something like that like dude you got <laughs> shrimp on your, you got sh- oh no that, oh no he's naked um that is was he by was it's a he so yeah um so was the celebrity by themselves no i said the the person was with their partner okay and were they naked yep. too or no no, the partner was not naked. What's up with these male celebrities just being naked with their yeah, chick, like, like Orlando, Orlando Bloom. Bloom and Katy Perry? Remember that? Like he was just butt naked, and she's just like, "Please put on clothes. Please Dude, put on clothes." Chicks are, chicks are not into that. There's no woman that's like, "Yeah, just get naked." Yeah, I, I don't think so. At least, at least my wife is like, "Put your clothes on." <laughs> like, let's. <laughs> yeah, but everyone, stop DM, DM Dax. You heard his tip on who the naked. No, don't keep damning me. Like, give me some good suggestions if you are. But I, I feel like I'm, I've led you down a very good path. Wait, so you had, can let do know I gave out another hint on the podcast. Did anybody guess right? Uh, I have yet to see a correct guess. But after again, I do have 96 unread DMs because <laughs> I just couldn't keep reading through them. All right. Let's get on to Fashion Week because uh, Fashion Week is huge. It's rolling on right now in New York. Um, tell me about David Dobrik. I mean, he is obviously one of the biggest, most famous people on social media. He crushes it on YouTube. What is David Dobrik like in person? Um, huge. No. Um, no. He's a he's a nice guy. Uh, low key, no entourage. I mean, he went with this. So it's funny. I was hanging outside this hotel and I was talking to a friend. I ran into a friend outside a hotel. And next thing you know, I see this girl, Natalie, from um, the Vlog Squad, who's David's, like, manager slash assistant slash, like, right hand. And she's on, she's a big, you know, she was a YouTube star as well because she's always in David's vlogs and his social. And she was also in Sports Social Swimsuit. So I started to film her and talk to her. And she was okay her boyfriend was very nice but she was like sort of like timid and just but like you know a little bit uncomfortable i don't i don't mind okay. saying it but uh is it uncomfortable because she's just not used to having a camera in her face i mean you live in la you're hanging out with david dobrik i feel like you gotta become a little familiar you know familiar with it plus the questions i asked were so cookie cutter dude you know like it was, mm-hmm. they weren't bad i was like i was being super nice and and then all of a sudden 
David came out, and I just asked him a question. And here, like, can do you mind if I play? Yeah, it no, right go now? for it. No worries, buddy. Real quick, your favorite person? Who's the last person you met that you were starstruck by? I mean, I always get the same response because it's the most honest answer, Robert Downey Jr. That's a cool. Well, you got, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm obsessed with Iron Man, and like when you see, uh, like a, a, f a superhero in real life, it's like the closest you can get to a real life superhero because those they don't exist. So like seeing Robert Downey was like I was actually seeing Iron Man. Yeah. So that's the one. What was Dude, that's awesome. It's pretty cool. He's cool. It, I, it, he's a huge, huge star to get. So that, that's very cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm very interested in him. I'm interested in him. I'm curious about him. I wish I could add more time with him, but he was on his way to an event i believe no he was doing something um but he was cool you know he, he seemed nice like a nice guy like i get it i get it but he always dresses the same like i get I it. i like that he gave you the time of day he like there's so many other people that i see become huge on youtube very quickly and again that fame can go quickly to their heads and this guy is still stopping being nice being cordial answering questions i like it no he was very nice very cool as soon as i put the camera down i like said something to him and you know i always try to talk to the person off camera like every time i talk to celebrities like yeah the the video might be done but i still always try to talk to him a little bit off camera but he was he was a nice guy there you don't understand dax as soon as labor day ended well even during labor day the u.s opens going on then also you have fashion week going on the Hamptons is officially done, so everyone starts to come back in the city. So the city was just, you know, celebrities everywhere, and these fashion shows are insane. And, I mean, it's just, you know, if you follow me on social media, you see me trolling Fashion Week, you know, messing with these people, going, you know, who are you wearing, the designer, or saying, like, fashion forward, fashion backwards. I put on this, like, not even good accent, just mess with people. Here's a funny story, though. I was at this... Um, I went to Bloomingdale's on Friday night. They had this big fashion show. And I got there a little late. And, you know, there's so many people on the street. It's right on uh, 3rd Avenue. 3rd Avenue? 3rd or 2nd Avenue it's on. And there's just people. 3rd Avenue, I think it is. People everywhere. No, it's. I'm sorry. It's on Lexington. It's on Lexington. And people are everywhere. So many people in the red carpet's going on. And I didn't get approved to be in the red carpet. I didn't have a, you know, I don't, I didn't get, I never get the email saying, Hey, if you want to cover the red carpet, you know, here's the, you know, please contact. No. So I just walked on the red carpet, dude. I walked in really quick, very confident and smooth. And somehow I just walked in, I saw like a little hole in the barricade and got right on the red carpet. And I was so sweaty, dude. Cause I was just riding my bike all day, just running around. <laughs> so I'm wearing a backwards hat, a sweaty vintage t-shirt and mesh shorts. Okay. Everyone is so dressed up, you know, in their fashion clothes. Even the red, <laughs> even the f photographers are sort of dressed up. And I, I'm dressed down. Like, I look like a camp counselor just standing on the side. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, I look like someone that was like, take your kid to school day. And I'm standing there. I would not let you take my kid to school dressed like that. No, I looked like a bum. <laughs> anyway, I start, like, I can't really do interviews on the red carpet because I don't have, like, a, um, a good mic. And the people, I'm all the way at the end of the carpet, and no one's really going to talk to me. Like, they'll stop for, like, Entertainment Tonight or Access Hollywood, but they're not going to talk to me. They always put me at the end of the carpet where the people are like, oh, they got to go. Sorry. So I start trolling people. I start doing, you know, to Drew Barrymore, who are you wearing, the designer, and just, like, messing with people. The publicists of the red carpet see me and they're just like, I can see them talking to each other like, who is this guy? Like, what is he doing? He doesn't even have like a ch like the, 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 the necklace the, that says he's like press around his neck. <laughs> so they come up to me and I can see like they're trying to sort of like kick me out. But like, who is this guy? Like, who are you with? So they ask me, they come, excuse me, who are you with? And real quick, I said, very confident. I said, I'm with Out Magazine, Out.com. <laughs> <laughs> which is a, you know, a gay outlet, which I just kind of was the first thing, which they're like, oh, out.com. Like, oh, okay, cool. And I could just see like in the back of her head, she was like, well, I can't kick out a gay magazine off the red carpet <laughs> because it would be bad press for them. I'm like, what? You're kicking a gay media outlet off the red carpet? How dare you? So I just like, they left me alone, but they're sort of like trying to like, like just figure me out. And I just kept changing You're the subject. Ridiculous. Oh, it was so funny. But uh, I got like, I got a few celebrities on there. I got like, you know, I got this cool video of Alicia Silverstone and Drew Barrymore. Is there actually an out.com? So I guess there is because I put in the computer after and I, some gay site came up, but I don't even know what it is. I, I mean, 
it, I would talk, it's some LGBT, I don't know, something gay. Anyway. Um, yeah. It is, it is out magazine. Right. Yeah, it's it's a, you know it worked. So they didn't. That's the only outlet I could think that would, they would not kick me out for. Yeah, they um, can't kick you out. That would look horrible on them. So I got that to a funny. few celebs. I you know it's funny. I saw Alicia Silverstone. I saw Drew Barrymore. Saw. Oh, I saw your video of uh, Alicia like come up behind Drew on the red carpet and kind of like scare her. Yeah. And, that was really that cute. That was cute. That was fun. It was fun to see like them run into each other. And, uh, he, uh, I saw Emily Rat, uh, Emily Rat there, and this was just hours after she announced that she's getting divorced. Um, mm-hmm. I did meet this the guy Angus Cloud from Euphoria. He's a unique guy. Like he's why you say that? He's like so. If you watch the show, what you see on the TV show, he's pretty much the same guy. And I didn't know if he was, you know, a little burnt. If he had a little, uh, if he was partying a little bit before. But, like, he went into the, the party, and, like, Jack Harlow's performing. There's food in the party. He was in there for, like, a little bit, and then they had, like, a food truck outside where he could get pizza. He pretty much, like, hung outside and was just eating pizza with his friends on the on the food truck. And I was like, what the? he was just a weird guy. Like, I tried talking to him, but very, like, space cadet But, I mean, but that's the vibe. That's, I guess, who he is on the show, and I guess it's who he is in, in real life. What about uh, Rosie O'Donnell? I saw you. Oh, so I got Rosie O'Donnell got today. Rosie. Rosie was cool. I mean, she was. Um, she's just nice. Like she's she's you a good person. Do you want to play it? Yeah, let's play it. Cool. Excuse me. You're going back on stand up. Oh yeah. I'm excited to see this. Thank you. How's it going to be going back on stage? Is it a good time to do stand up? Because I remember you're going to be like you're we not have a comic. To go to the next appointment. I'm yeah. so sorry. But uh, I'm I'm just starting to work on it now. It'll be probably like six seven months, but we're gonna hopefully bring it to New York. Are you gonna do small rooms and clubs, or like, would you feel good? Little popping? theaters. Yeah. Good? Not clubs. So. What's your best bombing experience? Every comic has a bombing. Experience. Mandalay Bay. What happened? Opening of Mandalay Bay. I was horrible. Is it crazy yeah. that everyone wants you to talk Trump, or is that do you not want to talk about it anymore? Is it one of the things you just address? Oh, I just want him arrested. You think it's, I think it's going to happen because this is America and nobody is above the law. Do you miss doing the View because you were no, so good no, on it? No, I don't. Do you think you'll ever go back? Because okay. I think you'd be great on it. I don't think so, but thank you. All right, good seeing you, Rose. Dude, that was fun. Yeah. I, I, I never. You never know what you're going to get with Rosie. Yeah, I feel like she's one of those people like she could either rip your head off, be super cool, like, or or like switch it on you and make you feel like the idiot, and she. That was a good interview. Yeah, you know what? Rosie's one of those people where she's nice, and I don't want her to think I'm coming there with an agenda to either make her look bad. I'm just coming there trying to give her a platform with my camera. You know, ask questions, but not, like, provoke her or just trying to, like, make her. You know, I think she always has her guards up a little bit. But I've met her before, like, even at comedy clubs in the past, and she's always been very sweet and very nice. Um, Actually, there was a funny, there was an event today. It was a charity event in New York. And there's a few like celebrities there, like Keith Urban and a bunch of athletes. A lot, a lot of athletes. Uh, Eddie Falco. Uh, who else? Dean. Edie Falco. Edie Falco. Who else? Uh, the guy from uh, uh, Walking Dead. Um, I forget his name. One of the one of the main stars of The Walking Dead was there. Uh, CC Sabathia, Eli Manning, uh, Rob Gronkowski. Rob 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 Gronkowski. Um, so there's a bunch of celebrities there and the, 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 the PR company that ran the event, Ice Tea and Coco come out, your friends, oh, Ice Tea and Coco. I love them. You went to their I wedding. Yeah. Wild. They're my buds. I, I went out, to, they took me out to dinner out in New York and walking around with them, like Ice Tea, everyone is just shouting his name. Like it's, he's dope. Dude. So what happened was Ice Tea and Coco walk out and there's a few autograph there, autograph hounds there. And the autographers have these blank sheets because, you know, they don't know who's showing up. So they want the celebrity to sign the, bl- the blank sheet. And what they do is they print the celebrity's photo on the sheet so the autograph goes on the photo. Does that make sense? Yep. So the autographs all have their blank sheets. And then the, P- the publicist of the event run out and go, sorry, sorry, he can't sign white sheets. He can't sign white sheets. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Shut up. Like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're not the one to decide this. Like, you're just, you're not his publicist. You're the event publicist. And Ice-T looks at her and he's like, what are you talking about? I'll sign him. What are you, what are you talking about? And she's like, oh, he's like, yeah, what are you talking about? And I kind of got into it with the PR team. Like, why are you being assholes? Like, stop being dicks, like, to these guys. Like, you're making it very awkward. I'm filming this. It's not looking good on video, so it's bad. The PR person, like the head PR person comes up to me and goes, I'm so sorry. Can you delete the video? 
I'm like, no, this is be you know, this is bullshit. You guys are being assholes about this. Um, you know, uh, this is. I, I'm always impressed though when you do see the autographed people, and they have like in their car is hundreds of photos of every celeb that you could possibly run into, and they'll go run it, and they're like here's Alicia Silverstone from the eighties. I'm like, how, Dude, like, how did you have that in your car at some they're point? They're so organized. But what happened was because I deleted the video, the PR company allowed me to go upstairs to this office where like they, they're doing this event and they allowed me to go into the event. Again, I'm wearing a hat, shorts and t-shirt. Everyone's wearing suits and they, they let me go in and just kind of run around. So I ran around and got like photos with some cool people and got to like nice. do some interviews. And then all of a sudden they brought in food for the workers and I was like, fuck it, I'm going to take advantage of the free food. So I just like walked in and act like I was like the crew and took some of the food because I was, <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to eat for free. And um, awesome. I know these are just such random stories, but there's all there's so many fashion shows and it's just insane. Like I highly suggest if you're in the tri-state area and for, you know, if, especially if you're a New Yorker, look up the fashion week schedule and just see the vibe outside these fashion shows. I met up with Sonia Morgan. Sonia Morgan mm -hmm. was great. Uh, always fun talking to her. She's always cool and super sweet. She's with her daughter. Um, but I was watching TV and I saw you on the television. Yes. Yes. You were on the, you saw me. yeah, this Michael Jackson special. Dude. So, okay. So I filmed this with TMZ. Oh God. What was it? Like four maybe four months ago i think before i went to europe uh you know harvey called and, and said hey like do you want to be a part of this it's a documentary we're doing on michael jackson i didn't know much about it more than like hey uh, i had a big part to play in you know obviously breaking the news of his death and so you know we were going to kind of go over the events that led up to his death and so the, the, the whole documentary turned out, it's called TMZ Investigates Who Really Killed Michael Jackson. Um, if you missed it when it was on Fox the other night, it is now on Hulu. Dude, I was watching it. This is probably some of the best television TMZ has ever put together. Like, I was shocked how just amazing it turned out. They did such a good job. The editing, the graphics. Uh, they got fucking Conrad Murray to do an interview that's insane they got debbie Rowe to sit down and do an interview these are people that have never spoken uh about michael you know what i'm saying and to, to hear debbie Rowe talk about conrad to interview they had charles they had harvey myself all doing these little like play-by-plays of michael jackson's kind of final years but things that led up to you know, his addictions with different painkillers and Demerol and needing propofol to sleep. I mean, I literally like sat back and I, I thought, wow, I'm actually really like impressed to be a part of this documentary because it turned out so good. And if you guys haven't seen it, go watch it. I promise you will not be let down. It's on Hulu. Search TMZ Investigates um, and who really killed Michael Jackson. Just really, really good television and it's like two hours, though. Just a heads up. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this. If someone has is watching it or hasn't watched it, what's mm -hmm. the biggest takeaway someone should have from watching this? I think, number one, hearing Conrad Murray. I think, you know, he went to jail for years uh, for involuntary manslaughter of Michael Jackson. And to hear him talk about it and hear his perspective of what really went down and who should be at fault for Michael's Jackson, Michael Jackson's death, I thought was really interesting. Um, I have, like I said, I had not heard him talk. I didn't know he was in the documentary until it came out and I was watching it myself. Um, Dr. Drew is in it as well. Um, I think Debbie Rowe, again, I hadn't seen Debbie Rowe in years. Um, and so to see her sitting there and breaking down and crying while talking about Michael and talking, well, she wasn't, it wasn't so much Michael. She was talking about Arnie Klein and her role that she played because she was one of the uh, like medical assistants in Dr. Klein's office. And so she kind of was like talking about her role in helping facilitate people getting hooked on meds and how she is kind of holding herself responsible again really really fascinating 
documentary. Go check it out on Hulu. TMZ investigates who really killed Michael Jackson. How long? Were I don't you, think you'll be let down. How long were you interviewed for? Like, how long was your interview? To, um, like, when they recorded, how long were you talking for? Oh, uh, a couple. I think it was maybe an hour, maybe two. Not too long. They they um it was just up in L.A. It was yeah, I want to say maybe two hours, but had lots to talk about. I mean, Michael Jackson is like one of the most interesting human beings that ever walked the planet. You know what I'm saying? Like the fame was so big and people were so intoxicated with his fame that it, it makes for a really good story. What does he do now? Dr. Conrad, him? he's no longer a doctor. Con- I, I should stop no, saying no, no. Conrad his Murray. Medical license. Yeah. His medical license was revoked. Uh, I don't know what he does. I, that, that question wasn't brought up. It was mostly let's look back retrospectively on what, how your career crumbled. And he even said, you know, after all of this went down, I lost basically everything. Everything I had set up for my future, for my kid's future, for everything. He paid out in lawyer's fees and trying to like clear his own name. I got it. I mean, it's a wild thing, but I kind of feel bad for him. And I do and I don't uh, because in his position of working with Michael Jackson, it's like you have to balance. And, you you know, you obviously you need to do the best job because you are a doctor. However, when you have one of the biggest people in the world saying, give me more, give me this, give me that. like, I'm telling you, they go into all of this in the documentary of how he was one of the many doctors that came in and out of Michael Jackson's life who Michael Jackson was able to manipulate the system and – say i want this and because he was michael jackson he would be given it it's good it's good all right one last thing i'll say one last thing about michael jackson i'll say uh you know we talked about autograph hounds and these guys i was i always ask autograph hounds like i'm always curious of their stories of like who's cool who's not and i asked one guy not too long ago who's like who was the nicest person someone who's been around for years who's the nicest person and they said michael jackson he was so great really but a person that that person was like nine years old at the time when he was running after him, so that's got to be. You know. <laughs> Stop it! No, but Stop no, it. but it, he, he, the, Stop it. the person said uh, that Michael was the nicest, always one of the nicest, coolest guys. Hmm. And you know who the number two was was uh, hmm. Freddie Mercury. Really? Said he was a great guy, it, like super, super, superstars. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, well, if you guys do get a chance to watch it, just hit me up. Let me know what you think. Um, I did get a lot of really nice comments from people out there saying how much they appreciated my input in the documentary. So just let me know what you think. All right. We, we, what did you say about Pearl Jam? I saw uh, you texted me something about Pearl yeah, Jam. Did yeah, yeah. you go I, watch them? No, yeah. I went, to, uh, I went to go see Pearl Jam the other night at the Apollo Dude, Theater. Oh, man, it's so cool. The Apollo Theater is in Harlem and it's one it's so old it's really old but the way it's set up I mean it's like you're on top of the stage and it's just so old and to see Pearl Jam perform in like an iconic place and such a intimate venue was just so cool and I thought there'd be more celebrities there I mean there, there could have been more people there um I just saw one like old hockey player that I recognized Ty Domi who was like a famous hockey player um, but then, there was not another single, like, that's it out of all the slides. Honestly, I couldn't see if there was more. Um, but uh, I'm actually going back to the Apollo. So we're recording this on Monday night. I'm going back to the Apollo on Tuesday night, and this is going to come out on Wednesday. So I'm going back to the Apollo to watch the Chili Peppers. The Red Hot Chili Peppers are playing at the Apollo. Ooh. So I'm going to see them at They're the Apollo. definitely going to be celebrities. So apparently that. there's going to be tons of celebrities there because uh, I think – Apparently, Guy O'Siri, who's Madonna's longtime manager, is bringing in a lot of names where it's like the hardest ticket to get. Um, so that's going to be pretty cool. Is he close with the band? Why Why is he bringing in? People? So I, he could represent them. He might be their manager. Oh. Yeah. That's interesting. He represents like a few people. So Red Hot. Guy O'Siri, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Let's see. Go Guy. Oh, yeah. Red Hot Chili Peppers go with Guy O'Sear for management. Yeah. So there you go. And that, it looks like they just started up that relationship in 2021. So Guy O'Sear is Madonna's longtime manager. He's also one of the most well-connected 
well-respected guys in Hollywood. I mean, he's just, he's the man. He knows everyone. Yeah. He's the man. He's been around for a long time, but he's got great relationships. People love him and crushes it. Cool. Well, let me know how go- that goes. Sounds yeah. Cool. What Are you falling a lot with the whole, you know, queen passing? Obviously, her passing, but with what's going on with Meghan and Prince Harry and... Dude, did you see the video of Prince Harry, Meghan surprising the crowds outside of the castle when it was like him and they come out with William and Kate? Dude, no one saw this coming. Okay, so I I put on my Detective Dax hat and I watched the body language. I watched everything. And I think... That this was the smartest PR move that they have ever done <laughs> is really what I think it came down to. You know, I guess it was Prince William who reached out to Harry and said, hey, texted him and said, hey, do you want to do the walkabout with us? And Prince Harry was like, sure. I think it was the best possible move for both sides. It made Prince Harry look like good to be there with his brother because there's a lot of people in the UK that like still blame Harry, still blame Meghan for a lot of the crap that goes down. And so them showing this unity and walking down and saying hi to everyone, showing respect to their grandmother, the queen, but then going and like shaking hands with all the people down the street, like such a brilliant PR move. And I think it made people welcome Megan even more. Yeah. Because now she's out there with Catherine and it like everyone was like, oh, well, if they're going to accept him, we need to accept him again. It was such a brilliant move. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it's it's a wild move. It's, uh, but I just don't know how the story ends. Like you know, Queen the. Hey, you know what it is? It's the first step to Harry and Meghan actually coming back to the UK and being invited back because Grandma was like the last attachment to the UK. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not getting along with anyone else in his family. At least that's what the stories make it seem. And so with her passing, it's like, who else is going to want him back at this point? And I think maybe there's some rekindling of a relationship. They've gone through enough crap. Mend it up, you know? So is there is that a possibility? Like, can he left the... He, what's it called? He, he's not a working royal. He, yeah, so he's not... But can he come... Because of the blood, can he go back to being a royal? He's still a royal. He's not a working Work, yeah, royal. Yeah, can he go back to being a working royal if he wanted to? I think he could. I mean, he is, a, he is now the son of the king. So, yes. And I think that uh, I was reading somewhere, and I may be totally wrong. Someone listening to this may completely correct me. But looking at the line of succession, he still is in the line of succession, whether or not he is a working royal. So it still goes William, then George, then I totally forget their daughter's name, then Prince Harry, and then Prince Harry's kids. So, yeah, I, I listen, it's a— Is it Charlotte? I, I, do you think, though, there is someone working in-house with the royals to say, hey, here's a good move for us, this is going to be— What do you mean, is there? Yes, bro, that's what they do. The, the whole thing is one big— Show corporation, yes, it's a corporation. So, of course, there's people in there that are like, Okay, what do we do to rectify this? What, what chess move can we make right now to make this work? So, yes, someone absolutely said, Prince William, you need to make this happen, reach out to your brother, or vice versa. Someone said, Hey, Harry, this would work good for you. Let's, let's, you know, orchestrate this, and it needs to look like Prince William reached out to you, whatever it is, this was a coordinated move and it worked out really well. People like were shocked. I, you know, it's so funny. I hate like, especially when print uh, Harry and, and, and Kate and Megan, they're walking down and they have those photos that the TV shows bring in body language experts I'm like, oh, uh, that was me. I, they should have just brought me in. I was the body language. Expert. Oh yeah. That was you. <laughs> just kidding. But the, no, but I, I, I was watching them being like, okay, like, how is this going to go? I like that. They weren't like, let's all hold hands or let's 
overdo it because the world, I think, would have felt that really quick and been like, this is fake. I like that they didn't, you know, hang out necessarily together or, like, make it even look like they're okay with each other. They said, let's go out, be next to each other, respect grandma, and then we can kind of go our separate ways and greet the, the crowds. And then and they were out there for 45 minutes doing this. I don't know. I just thought if if there was a good PR move, whoever invented this PR move definitely deserved a raise. So Meghan Markle does the interview with Oprah. And we hear her side of like what happened, mm-hmm. what goes on, which was a crazy interview. Do, would the Royals ever air themselves out where we hear their side? Mm, the Royals, I think that they tend to stick away from being too controversial. And this is goes with everything. Do you, do you watch The Crown? I do not. I, watch The Crown. It's really interesting how they treat situations, how they cover up situations, how they, you know, it's all about preserving The Crown is really what it comes down to. Um, and again... Who knows how much of that is reality, but I think there's a lot of reality based in the show itself. Um, you know, but you look at the sacrifice the queen put a, did for so many years of service because that was her number one duty, being the queen of England and, uh, you know, being loyal to all of her subjects. I don't know. It's really cool. Very cool. Well, listen, thank you guys for uh, checking out the Hollywood Raw podcast. Make sure you leave a review. Uh, leave your name, actually, when you put the review so we know we could thank you personally rather than the screen name they give you. Um, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Ron at All. We have uh, a private Facebook group uh, called... Uh, What's it called? Off the record. Off the record. What's it called? Off the record. <laughs> we got uh, our dude. I am approving so many people coming in this thing. No. It's like every day there's, I don't know, fifty new people that want it to this. It's group. cool. It's if you have questions cool. for us, we're gonna do a, an episode where the fans could ask us questions. So feel free to send the Instagram DM, the Instagram account questions, or put a question for the podcast in the Facebook. Uh, page and we'll, we're gonna do an episode where we answer fan questions. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Hollywood Raw Pod. Follow me at, at Adam Glynn, G L Y N. Follow Dax Holt at, at Dax Holt. We'll see you guys next time. Later. What's up, guys? If you like that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go. Hey.